phone's supposed to be in the phone box. <laughs> I've never seen one stuck on the outside before. Hi everybody. I'm in Chitristar. Uh, I should be in the garage working today, but to be honest with you, anxiety and stuff has been getting the better of me. And yesterday I was doing some work and I basically made a stupid mistake because I wasn't thinking clearly and screwed up a day's work. Uh, and I had a couple of things to do this morning. I was going to go into the garage and I was just like, oh, stressing out. Get out on the bike. Just Christ sake, just go for a ride. And I needed to come up this way to talk to a local bike shop because I should be doing some reviews with them uh, as the year comes up. No scrap value, really. Are people stealing signs? Uh, yeah, do some reviews of a couple of brands which I have not been near yet. So that should be interesting. Just had a quick chat with them. Had the old classic, come down anytime and can manage to come down the one day that there wasn't the person I needed to speak to there. But oh well. Now, I do have a subject I want to talk about because this morning I was just like, you know what, I'm going to contact YouTube and just have a discussion with them and see, see if I can get some information, try and so they can have, give me some suggestions. Because, you know, I've got a channel with 72,000 subscribers and it's a little bit difficult for me to get a video to get over a couple of thousand views and statistically that just seems unlikely brackets every hater that's about to say that's because you're shit nah, 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 fuck off you might not like me but i still have one of the most subscribed motorcycle channels in the country so you know but i do understand that not all the content that i make is of interest to people who are interested in bikes and that as it turns out is a bit of an issue um because i was under the impression with the way that the youtube algorithm and everything is and let me just say i'm not really i don't really care about the algorithm and being successful or anything like that I just need things to be good enough. And obviously when I started out on YouTube, I made really random videos just riding 125 around, chasing through puddles and doing dumb stuff. And I realized I couldn't keep doing this as I got older and older. Remember that I was like 24 when I started? You know, I was, I think a lot of people thought I was 17 and were like, ah, he's just 17 and having fun on his bike. And it's like, no, I'm, I'm a massive child. I still do it now, I'm 33. But the, po the point is, Hang on a minute, where do I want to go? I want to go to Selzy. I'm going to go look for some fossilised shark's teeth. So I'm in the wrong lane, aren't I? Aren't I? Mm -mm. Well, let's go up one and see. God damn it! It was that one, I knew it was. Oh, I'll go up the roundabout and come back. Divi, coming in hot. Come on! <laughs> Such a... They're doing their test or training or something! Go you! Okay, so yes, I started out doing random crap and I realised I couldn't keep doing that. And then I was like, uh, eventually I was like, I want to do some bike reviews because I got my licence and I wanted to do reviews on, on we'll get to ride bigger bikes that's kind of why I wanted to do the reviews was to, to, to experience new bigger bikes and get to know what I liked and didn't like in bikes and, and in doing that I've done about 40 something reviews um, millions of views between them I think at this point strangely the most successful ones aren't the, the 1000cc sports bikes or anything like that the Bergman 650 is my most viewed review at over 300 and something thousand views. And I think the Van Van 200's doing pretty well these days too. But yeah, I did that and it was a great success for this channel to do that, but it was so much work. I put so much time into it, you know, going to these places, riding the bikes, editing the videos, that I was paying to do it and YouTube was not reimbursing me. Um, now obviously around the same time I was working for Lumi, so it kind of all balanced out. Well, then that all ended with Lumi's and I started the Metal Works and it was like, well, I can't make videos as much as I did before because now I need to spend time making clocks. Don't worry, I'll get to my point soon. You understand? There's some things you can learn from this for, for other YouTubers. So I started making clocks and I was like, well, I could make videos doing this. You know, it brings an interest to the items themselves because people want to, you know, they get to see something made and then they get to buy the clock at the end of it if they want to. 
and I also made some like how-to videos and things like that, and mechanical explanations. My most successful videos are what well, are like how does a car bar, car bar, 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 how does a car engine, work? no, fuck's sake. How does a motorcycle engine work? How does a motorcycle, why am I not surprised it's broken down? How does a motorcycle gearbox work? Those sorts of things are the things that have done very well on my channel. So I thought, you know, if I make some 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 making videos, some doing things, it's, it's a big industry on YouTube, surely I can, I can tap into that market as well. You know, I'm a little bit here, a little bit there, and do a range of videos. So I really am making the videos that I want to, uh, and I hope that I will just find, you know, there's seven billion people on this planet. There's, there's a much, there's many more people that watch motor vlogs than watch my videos. There's many more people watch um, mechanical stuff than watch what I was doing at the time. There's, you know, and these are big, big audiences. And I thought, you know, well, I can, I can do a bit there and a bit there, and it might be. And I don't see, I see most people who ride bikes might be interested in, in making and fixing and doing and stuff like that, and that all works. And I don't know. I think probably. You know, because to have a bike, you have to be relatively mechanically minded. If you do work yourself, which as I've recently mentioned, yes, I think you should. So I thought, it's got to be a winning combination, isn't it? Ah, no, it's not. It, it turns out you really shouldn't have multi-subjected channels. The old classic of make the videos that you want to make. Yes, that's correct, but only make one type of video. That's why, as I've mentioned before, you know, the templated content, like the Hydraulic Press channel and stuff like that, it's it's a template and they just do the same thing, but slightly different. YouTube absolutely loves it when you do that. And I thought, yeah, but it shouldn't make that much of a difference, surely. So anyway, I contacted YouTube this morning and I said, hey, look, I've got a channel with 72,000 subscribers. I've been doing this for like nearly nine years. I'm not the best YouTuber I know, but it seems statistically weird that I still have a growing channel 72,000 subscribers and I only get a couple of thousand views on each video surely surely if you if that many people didn't watch my videos they just unsubscribe the guy looked through my channel and said no actually you're in really good standing everything's fine I can't see any obvious problems in the background um, he, he even went through some of my analytics and kind of pointed some bits out and said oh look you are getting discovered here and you are getting this here but obviously things like the majority of your views are coming from from some subscribers and, and, and they're recommended blah, blah, blah. But the point is, it's like, well, that explains where the current ones are coming from. It doesn't explain where all these other subscribers are. And he then linked me to bits of the YouTube Academy. You know, there's basically training courses you can do about YouTube and they suggest you should do them if you're trying to grow a channel. Now, I've already done a few of these just out of interest in the past and they weren't much help. It was all pretty obvious stuff. And then this YouTube dude sent me a link to this one article, and there's this one section in the middle that just blew my frigging mind. Which is this bit, that basically says, make something, if it's successful, we'll keep helping you. If it isn't, move it to another channel, do something different. Now, they're not going to promote stuff if people aren't engaging with it. So then the question comes, are likes and comments important anymore? Yes, I think they are. Um, although getting likes is very difficult. You know, people, as I said in the past, when I used to have four or 5,000 people would watch my videos religiously. Uh, and then maybe 150, 200 would like them. In fact, I get more likes now with less views than I used to in the past. Oh yeah, there is a speed camera here, isn't there? I knew, I was riding carefully because I knew there was a speed camera somewhere. Hang on, is this a 30 or a 40? I can't remember. Fuck it, we're going 30 just in case. Because this is a real speed camera. This isn't one of those pony NPR cameras. So long story short, it seems like if you create videos and then oh no, you do a series of videos which are massively successful, YouTube will push those and push those and push those, both recommended wise and to your subscribers. If you then go back to the old content you were making, that you've been making for years, YouTube will stop recommending that to people and will stop pushing it to your subscribers. I think the only way I'm going to reignite this channel to get YouTube favouring it again um, is by returning to a more set style of, of content, which I, I don't like the idea of doing. I like making all the different videos I make. But unfortunately, views and the popular, uh, popularity of my channel seems to be directly 
um, connected to how many sales of clocks and things I make, which means that if I don't get enough views, I don't sell enough clocks. It doesn't matter about the YouTube money itself. I mean, this is where Patreon kind of is that shortcut and helps solve that problem a little bit. And thank you to my patrons. And if you want to, if you want to join it, please do. It's, it's it's a buck a month. That's seventy-seven p. I'm not exactly uh, one of these places going five dollar tier, twenty dollar tier, fifty dollar tier, five hundred dollar tier. You know, I'm, there's there's lots of them, and they're big successful channels that people really like. Buck a month. And of course you don't have to do that at all. If you just watch the videos, if you remember to like them and comment on them like I regularly say, that will do wonders for my channel because if there's content of mine you really like, this I agree is not going to be it because I'm talking about YouTube again. If you like the content that you like and comment on it and watch it, then YouTube would be like, ah, they like it, let's show this to more people and then more people might like it and it will grow and grow and grow. I am not, for anyone says it, suggesting that this is only down to YouTube algorithm and the audience. I haven't been able to do my usual for a long while. I stopped reviewing bikes for a bit because, well, basically I didn't really have anything I was interested in, but now I've got a connection with somewhere that's got new bikes that I am interested in. Unfortunately, Suzuki is just being very, very boring. Uh, they've got new bikes coming out next year, loads of them, and there is one coming out this, well, coming out relatively soon that hopefully, hopefully I'll get my hands on pretty early in the game, and I'm quite interested in it. So I am going to be doing more bike reviews because they, I mean, I always thought they were successful just because they were so searchable. You know, people are going to search for that bike and that review, and then that's why those things are getting watched. That's not, it's, let's say, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a journalist who gets paid just to go and do these things. I, I ended up with some of the companies that I worked with. They literally make me pay for the fuel in the bike as well as, as the risk of the bike having the crash on my head. Like, the, the demo thing you have to sign, if, if anyone rides it, if you ride the bike off, you have to pay X amount of money. I'm still under that, but I also have to pay for fuel. It's like, so you want me to promote your company and you won't even pay the five quid for fuel. And that's one of the reasons I don't do any um, reviews of that company anymore because it was just costing me money. It was like, literally, one of these videos might make me 10, 15 bucks. And I've got to put all of that in fuel to get there and back and ride their bike. As I say, I hope you don't see this as moaning. I'm literally talking about the facts and hopefully some tips that you might get from this. If you're, if you're starting a YouTube channel and you find something that works, for God's sake, don't change it unless you're not full-time and the views and all that don't really matter. Now, of course, a lot of people will then say to me, well, Spicy, why don't you just go and get a proper job and then it won't really matter? It's like, well, okay, well then what? I spend the, all, my, a lot of the money that I make in that job and a, a lot of my time to make content for people that wouldn't want to see me in any way be able to succeed. Because that's the way that it feels sometimes. It's like, it, sometimes, I'll be honest with you guys, sometimes it feels like you'd, well, not you'd, some peoples, not you specifically, would love to see me fail. Just... And of course, I have to remember that a lot of these people that are leaving negative comments and stuff like that are, oh, nice, the tide is out. Um, oh... Young whippersnappers who don't really understand how the world exactly works. I need to pee. I'm going to do that first before I walk out there. So what I'd like to know from you guys is basically what content of mine do you enjoy the most? What content will you be like? I will leave a like on every one of those videos if you make them. I'll leave a comment and I'll watch it. And I'll support your channel, even if it's just through watching it, if you make that content. That's what I need to know. Because as I say... <laughs> I'd love to continue doing things the way I always have, which I think is keeping to the core rules of, of what people expect, you know, to be true to yourself, make what you want, be honest, be a real person, which is something I do do. And as I turned out, I think it's probably quite, quite to my detriment at times that I am too real, because I talk about problems. So please, don't start giving me shit again. I'm a real person, okay? I'm not some fake bastard who tells you stuff that's not true. And I share my life with you so... Well, because it's it's more real and that's what i think we need in this world is less fake people like on youtube who just you know there's so many people that uh, oh you'll never believe the truth about this person it's like well, well yeah because they just put they're a puppet to make things successful anyway i'm gonna go because i'm looking for shark's teeth now thanks for watching thanks to the people who do support me and, and just let me know what is it that you enjoy let's say i'm not going to make any content that i don't enjoy making so i'm not going to be chasing the views necessarily but i do have to to a point 
try and keep my channel alive because I'm currently kind of got YouTube with a gun to it going, no, don't make that, don't make that because we're not going to show people your shit anymore. Anyway, let me know. Catch you next time.